Welcome to a spontaneous live stream. That's my first spontaneous live stream here in this channel ever. I'll try to live build some UI path and power automate and other RPA tools. And I think it makes great content because then I can interact with you. Sometimes I feel like I produce the videos and then I'm a little bit distant. So I can of course write the comments. So today we will talk about drop down menus in UI path. I made a great or at least a long video yesterday where I uh, talked about every concept in in the drop down menus in UiPath, which you can find by clicking the link in the description. So in these videos, we will make a few examples and we will talk about it. So I hope uh, right now I have zero viewers. Um, that's a little bit lonely. It is, um, it is an experiment, so I hope you will participate and I hope you will interact with me. And uh, with zero viewers, I think I will just get started because some of you might rewatch this. And um, I got a question because um, I talked about drop down menus or combo boxes yesterday in my video. And one of you asked, what about uh, if uh, I can use the select item? And that happens. And let me show you. So for example, we have a website here where um, we have a drop down or it looks like a drop down up here in the top events and I can select for example NHL, um, MLB and so on. Um, in order to do that, um, to operate in the browser, I need to define the scope and to do so I'll use an app, use application browser and drag it in. If you don't see it, it's because you don't have modern design experience activated. It's very easy to do. We can do it on the project level by going to the project pane, click the settings, and uh, over here in general, make sure you have the modern design experience enabled. You can also do it on a general plan by going to home and uh, going to settings, design, and use the modern for new projects. So with that established, we can now ensure that we have the same activities. Wow, I have two viewers at the moment. Um, Maybe I can try to say something. Hey, viewers. Uh, one of them disappears. Uh, let me see anyone out there. I hope that you will uh, participate in the live chat if you uh, watch this. And now let's get started to uh, solve how we can um, go uh, pass, uh, bypass the select item uh, problem. So I indicate an application to automate, and here I want to in automate my browser, which is this browser. So here, that's fine. Uh, one thing I will do is that I don't want the browser to open whenever I run the automation, only when this window is not open. So I click the drop down over here and choose if not open, like here. So now I can uh, use. Uh, now I can start to click the menu, and uh, here I uh, will usually use a select item and uh, I do so by um, finding a select item and drag it in. And by the way, if you see anything, if you uh, think the sound uh, could be better, the, the video, the, the surroundings here, anything that could be better, it's very appreciated if you uh, let me know in the, in the, in the chat. And by the way, this box here, that is uh, blankets, sound blankets. One of you, Christian, sent them to me because he, uh, he wanted the sound to be better. So for free, he just uh, sent these uh, custom-made sound blankets. Thanks a lot, Christian. It's really appreciated. You didn't have to do it, but um, it's very appreciated. So here, uh, whenever I, I need to select a drop-down, I usually go with a select item. That's true for the combo boxes. But look what's happened if I click Indicate here. And uh, let me drop this one in. And if I click the top event here, and when I click it, it says the in, um, the indicated target is not a valid UI element for the selected item tool. I, uh, that's uh, one thing I could do better in the, the live stream because uh, you couldn't actually see the pop-up because I made it a bit low, but, but uh, I hope you get the point. And um, what I want to do here instead is that I, I just want to make click activities. So we get rid of this select item and then we uh, find a, uh, a click and drag it in. And here I can uh, indicate what I want to click. Let's say that we are in the top events and we want to click the MLS. I think that is Major League Soccer. And to do so, I uh, indicate here 
and then I can uh, select in my browser. Uh, you can see the overlay, which is uh, a bit misfortunate, but since this is the live stream, I can tell you that there's a green overlay over here and we will select it. But because um, uh, we can't really, uh, we need to, to go to further down the uh, drop down menu, we will uh, cancel and then we will uh, make a hover that is pressing F6 whenever we are there. And um, to do so, I press F6 and now the menu will open and I can select, was it MLS? I select it here. There, um, a selector uh, operator comes up and uh, you can see it, but uh, you will see it in your own computer if you do it at yours. And what you want to do here is that uh, when in the bottom it says text is and then ignore text because we will um, or we can we can have it on at first and then we will ignore it afterwards to make it dynamic. So if I just click confirm here, um, we have now made an automation that will click an email as we need one thing because we hovered over the top events to make this visible so we can click here. So we need to hover in here in the click and to do so. And by the way, if you have any questions or anything, just uh, post them uh, below here. Or you can also join my Discord, which uh, the easiest way to find it right now is to go to my homepage, Anders Jensen Or, and then just click Let's Talk. And you can find it either by clicking I Love Automation Discord server or click over here. At the moment, we are 124 members online, meaning that that is 124 RPA developers. We are more than 1,300. We will help each other by a lot of tools, for example, UiPath, Power Automate, Automation Anywhere. All the nice RPA tools are there. Simply just click either here or click Connect. But now to get back to what we wanted to do, I wanted to have a hover over. So um, when I, whenever I want to click here, I wanted uh, first to hover over the top events. And uh, we search for that and then we drag it in at first. So what do I want to hover? Again, I can just indicate it here. And I'll indicate the top events. Again, you can see this pop-up selector, which is a bit of a bummer, but um, yeah, that's why uh, I make these streams. I wanna um, improve. So again, uh, let me know in, in the chat if anyone is there. I'm not sure that uh, I can see I got some likes and the average watch time is 39 seconds. I have 20 viewers, which is of course not a lot, but um, I'll, I'll work on my game, so uh, if I help you, please give this uh, stream a like, a comment, that will be highly appreciated. So now I hover over top events and then I click MLS. Should we see if it works? So if I run my automation, I am now clicking uh, hover over and I will go to MLS uh, down here and that works. But let's say that I want to um, jump to some other areas. Uh, for example, if I am in, uh, La let's just pick one of the other ones. If I'm in ENFL, then the problem will arise because if I want to um, start my automation now, we can find uh, this uh, thing that we are hovering over and we can find that because we, uh, we have the text top events. So let me stop UiPath and let me show you what we can do. So uh, we want to fine tune the selector and click the three ribbons here, click edit target. And um, what we want to do is that now you can see the overlay that's coming up, but you want to uh, change the text is to text uh, to ignore text. Then we made it uh, dynamic. So um, if I click confirm here, let's check that it actually works. It's always a bit scary in these live build, but this should work. So, um, now uh, we have uh, run our automation. Oops, let us try again. I will run it. It uh, appeared that we could use some more fine tuning selector work. I will do that after the video, um, but, uh, but that is the trick that we want to, um, let me, uh, we want to, uh, to be able to fine tune our selectors. And um, I think this is a good exercise to me. So it's not at all that confident sitting in here. And uh, now you see, there we go. I, um, while I talked, I um, 
made it work so it will work on each one of these uh, menus uh, what i did was that i made the selector dynamic with an asterisk and now you can see it works w whenever we are so uh, that's a bit of a i like these uh, my, my pulse got a little up there because um, well that was a bit scary so um now that I showed you how we can, uh, actually this was a question to one of my videos. It was a question, I forgot who the viewer was, but I will give him the link to, uh, I know he joined my Discord as well, which you can do. But now I will uh, talk a little bit about what, um, what, we, um, what we want to, to, to show here, because I will make a recap of yesterday's video. So in case you don't want to watch it, this will be a short recap. I know I'm sitting here rambling. And wow, there was a question. The Yings Boots, he says, this is pretty cool. I wonder if it works with Power Automate Desktop as well. Um, yeah, that's a great question. Thank you and thanks for joining. Um, you're helping me a, a lot with these questions. Yeah, it will work, but it's not the same program. So it will be a different approach. I'll try to um, have UiPath and then Power Automate Desktop and Power Automate and other RPA tools. I'll try to shift with between them in these live streams. They will not be... Uh, announced I will, will go live whenever I have something to say I know I'm not getting that maybe the most kind of viewers but that's okay I will train my live presence and I want all the feedback from you if you please give it in, either in the chat in the comments or in a private message I really it's really appreciated because I'll learn a lot from it so yeah I will make power to make desktop video but it's not the same approach and we can definitely target uh, drop downs so um, after that Let's, uh, let me show you what I have uh, prepared for you in case uh, as an automation developer. If, if you go to my webpage and then click blog, then uh, the latest blog item that is the drop down menus in UiPath, you can see it here. And um, um, here I just prepared a simple case. The, the video is by the way here if you want to see it. So just scroll a little bit down. There's a little bit description about drop down elements in UiPath, uh, the activities, find children and the selected item. So what I want to uh, show you here is that I prepared a sh small drop down here. It's just uh, 10 uh, RPA tools or, and um, often as RPA developers, we want to, uh, first we want to get each item in a drop down menu and that could be, it could change because it could be, sometimes it is uh, entries like employees in a payroll system. I automated quite a lot of that. And then we want to first, we want to get it. And then um, we want to, so we want to get each item and afterward we want to click each item that could be each employee here, it's an RPA tool. And um, so, uh, so that's a pretty good uh, exercise to do as an RPA developer. And I strongly encourage you to open up your own UI path and do these things with me. So to get all these elements and to display them, let's do a short exercise. And to do so, um, let us delete everything here and uh, start all over. Again, we will use a news application browser. We will indicate where we want to automate and that is in Chrome and in my blog here. So usually we want to create a variable and I think we should do that here. I think sometimes always forget. I can also forget it myself but I think it is a good exercise because I want to show you the best practices of RPA development and to create a variable is very nice because we can uh, create the variable instead of this this has two advantages we can reuse it and that is if uh, let's say that we use this web address 10 places in our automation then uh, the web address gets updated like in my blog here that gets moved so then we want to update it. We can just update it once instead of 10 places. And uh, let me show you here. I cut it out just by cutting uh, Control X. And then I press Control K to create a new variable. I can call this str UIL, maybe like this, and enter. I've now created a variable down here in variables. Again, I created it by pressing Control K. Now it is here. Then I can paste it in over here, Control V, and here you go. So now this one will open and it will open this uh, the value of this variable strul, which was my web address. One thing that we will uh, change again is that uh, we will not, we'll have this if not open. 
so it will not open the browser in case it is open. And um, so, um, so now we have to find the scope. And in case, again, you don't see it, uh, you need the modern design experience enabled. That could be done on project level here in settings by going down here, uh, general modern design experience. Otherwise, uh, there's, I made a video about it, which you can find. So now let's, uh, let's start to get the elements here from this drop down. And what we want to do here is that we want to uh, get information about each entry because it's, it's, it appears that it's only a text, but there's also a lot more attributes tied to these. So first we will just get all of these attributes tied to each one of these elements. And to do so, we will find a get children. So we will find a find children. No, no, there we go. And um, and uh, we will use the find children to get all the attributes of the drop down. So I will click indicate element on screen. And now uh, this was uh, you can't see it. I will fix it for the next live stream so you can see the UI path overlay. But there's a UI path overlay over my drop down. So I click it. And uh, here we go, we have found the children. We can rename our activity. So here I can just say find children and then I'll say RPA vendors. And let me know here in the chat uh, what you think. Uh, is anyone here? Uh, hey people, anyone here? I'll just type it in the chat and hopefully one of you, two of you will answer. Um, that would be pretty awesome. Just to, I know this is a new concept and it will probably be uh, hard to uh, to start up, but um, it will be a challenge of mine, and I will make the surroundings better. At, um, you can see that this office is not uh, it's not the nicest yet, but I hopefully it will be, or it will be. I will uh, buy new items today. I got this new microphone, which is a bit better than the old one, and I'll try to buy some new equipment, not in that most expensive one uh, in the beginning, because um, I'll try to. Uh, build my company and now here I got the uh, find children I got all uh, the attributes tied to it and I will save them into a, a UI I enumerable and I'll do that because I want to have them in a list which I can iterate through so if I go over here to output I press control K and then I will say I e I enumerable that's a prefix I can use anything I want I want I, I like a descriptive name so I'll just say I E N and then I can give it a name that could be vendor names like this so now this is saved into a list and creating the variable over here instead of down in the variable manager that has a huge advantage it is that the UI path will automatically um, um, use the, the correct uh, variable type let me show you here in variables um, you can see that the, the variable type is I enumerable of UI element. That is pretty clever. So we don't have to find themselves here in variable type. Let me show you how difficult that is. Then I need to browse for types. Now you can't see it, but then a huge menu pops up. So that's the, that's the benefit here. Oh, we got a question. Hello, Adash, and thanks the Ink Spots for being here. Um, I, um, I got a question. Um, at us automation, he says, can we use get attribute activity? For sure, you are just a little bit ahead of me. I will use the get attribute in a few seconds. So um, bravo, uh, that you're, you're totally right. We will use it uh, from the after the find children. So we use the find children to get all the, the attributes uh, from each one of these items. And then we want to get, get use the get attribute to get a specific item, which will be the name here, The in this drop down, it's APN, IBM, Open RPA, and such. But now we have them in an I enumerable. We can iterate through them and we can print out the names. So here I'll find a, sorry, I'll find a for each. Again, uh, this this live, uh, I can I can feel my heart here uh, when I when I uh, make these uh, tutorials. I just sit relaxed back and I can definitely. Um, not get my pulse up, but this one uh, I can I can feel my my heart uh, pumping a bit. And hi Joshua, nice to see you. Um, I'm so fan. I'm so glad that you uh, join here. It really helps me a lot, and I'm really glad that you keep this uh, chat engaging. Um, and you say you're a big fan, and uh, thank you. And now um, 
And now, as Sullivan, he, he says that he had to create a YouTube channel to chat, but here watching it. Thank you. And he, I'm helping him with getting a certification for the RPA Associate. I'm sure I'm not doing it, but I, if I can play a tiny piece in your uh, RPA journey, A. Sullivan, I'm so, so happy. Um, thank you for letting me know. And again, thank you, Joshua and uh, the Ink Spots and Aras. But uh, to, to get where we come from, we use a for each, and that is to iterate through each one of these children. Remember, we, we have now these children in, uh, in a list, in an I, innumerable, and, um, but there's a lot of things tied to it. Not only the name, there will be other attributes, and we will only need the name. So to do so, we'll have a for each. And we are going to iterate through the list, uh, the I innumerable uh, from before. So if I go over here, I'll say the I innumerable of vendor names, like this. So now I'm iterating through it. And one thing that you always need to, to change here, that is the type argument. Because right now we're saying it's an object, but uh, these I in, uh, innumerable, uh, these vendor names in the I innumerable of vendor names, those were UI elements. So I click browse for types. Uh, I think that one uh, is a bit uh, grayed out, but it, uh, whenever you try it yourself, it will open up in a big menu. I'll definitely fix these pops up for the next videos, but you know, um, sometimes you have to start a place and choose the one under UI path core, the UI element. So I click OK, and now you can see that I changed it up here to UI path core, UI path element. So now we can iterate through it, and we just want to get the attribute like a dash. He said that, um, that, um, why don't we use the get attribute? You're totally right, we will use the get attribute. So if I, and another thing that I want to ask you about, what do you think about uh, going live here on YouTube? You think that will interfere too much with the, the channel? Do you think it will be better to go live on Twitch or Facebook? I'll write a question in the chat here, I'll make a poll where should I go live? And then I will um, ask you, so if you, Really, I would really be appreciated if you just answer this, uh, Facebook, Twitch, or if it's not one of these three, uh, let me know which one of them you prefer. And um, I made the poll here, or at least I think I do. Uh, it's gone, but uh, no, it's here. So uh, let me know uh, where you prefer I go live, YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch, or uh, if, it, if it's a third place, uh, let me know in the chat. So. We are now uh, come uh, uh, huge. Uh, we 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 have the for each, and we can uh, use the get attribute like uh, Adash said. Uh, a Sullivan he says one. It is to a SC. I'm not really sure what you mean here. A Sullivan, can you repeat the question? Uh, I'll be very uh, happy to answer. But now I want to get the attribute, and here. I don't want to indicate it in Chrome because I got the, the attributes up here in the um, in the item. So in the input element, this is important. Uh, we uh, are using the information that's loaded in the item. So if you go over here to the input output, um, then I will. I I know this is covered by the browser again, but guys. I will make uh, make sure that this uh, setup will be a little bit better next time. But I think you get a lot. Uh, knowledge here so uh, we will we will let it run and here i will choose the item uh, as the input element then the attribute uh, usually a name in um in, um, in in these drop downs that is aa name so in quotation marks i'll say aa name like this and now i need to output it to uh, a variable and this will be a string this will just be the name that we are printing it out uh, uh, once there's a schedule and people know, yeah, you're right. I think I should make a schedule. Um, and then I actually thought about uh, doing them uh, quite often. You, you guys want to do it. Uh, you want to have it on YouTube. Um, I actually thought about uh, making them regularly, like uh, maybe two or three times a week and make them in the mornings. So just 10 minutes, I think, if that goes too long. This might have already been too long because we've been running 25 minutes. but. I think it will be okay, and then we can take on a lot of other questions, maybe bring in some interesting people. But to finish this one here, in the output, I'll press Control-K, and I'll say str, vendor name. And uh, I'll make, uh, make it here. And so now we created our automation. Let's just print uh, the name.
names out and then we're done. Uh, usually, uh, as an RPA developer, we wanted to, to move on here. So whenever we got the names, we can start by automating each step. That could be, again, employees in a payroll system. We could take each one of these. Here we will just print out uh, the 10 RPA tools and then we will go through them. So um, to do so, I will just use a right line. Make sure you are in the for each. Sometimes uh, if it's a little bit difficult to see, you can mark them and make sure you are uh, in the, the blue lines. To do so here, I'll just press STR with the name and then we can start the automation. So to do so, I'll just run the file. And uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, the ink sport says maybe you should focus on the part you want to show first and only read if there are any issues or, or if you have any questions. You're, you're totally right. I think uh, I could just structure these uh, a little bit better so we can um, have a, a relevant topic in the beginning. That could be a UI path, a power automate or another uh, thing. And then we can um, have uh, this talk afterwards if there are any questions. But uh, I have to start a place and then um, then move uh, on from here. Here, I printed out all the names, Appian, Auto Hotkey, Automation Anywhere, Blue Prism, IBM, Open RPA. That's how you get all the elements from a dropdown and use them here. Just print them out, we can save them to Excel. If you want a full guide, uh, my latest video, there's a link to it in the description here. I've uh, released it this morning. There will be a full 30 minute guide to dropdowns, how you save the elements, how you select one, how you select multiple, and how you select all elements um, and uh, I think I will stop from here I, uh, this one this was was 26 minutes it was 26 minutes of uh, high intense exercise if you have any questions after you watch this video please make them in the comments I'll answer any question related to this topic or anything else and you can also find my you can also attend the next live session where I will uh, reveal how much I earned as an RPA developer in my company I had a normal job like you. Uh, I'll reveal how much uh, uh, how much money I earned, and it will also be a little bit of a pressure, but that's okay. I think uh, I have no secrets, and that's what I preach. My company is about transparency, so I want I like to share. With that said, I like to say thanks for all your support, all the likes, all the uh, the interaction you make with me. That's re that's really helping my channel a lot. So see you soon. Bye bye.